Hey guys, so today I'm going to be walking through a tutorial of setting up domain-specific restrictions on Browser ID. So Browser ID is Mozilla's federated authentication system, and it works by essentially providing proof to your website that the user that's logging in owns the email address which they're using. And one of the restrictions on that is that it allows anyone to sign up for your website. So you need to handle the uh, validation of whether or not the user is allowed to or not. Because all Browser ID says is, yes, the user owns the email address, and not, yes, the user is allowed to sign up for your website. So if you want to restrict your website to specific users at a specific domain name, then you can do that by following this tutorial. And um, one of the things I'm going to assume is if you're using Django uh, Python environment here, and also that you've downloaded and are using Mozilla's web framework called Play-Doh. If you haven't heard of it before, Play-Doh is basically um, some pre-configured files using Django that you can download in order to get started with development right away. If you're not using Play-Doh or don't feel comfortable doing that, then you can still follow this tutorial, but you need to install Browser ID first. And that's one of the things Play-Doh does, is it um, includes all the setup needed for Browser ID. So what this tutorial is going to be doing is walking through the few simple steps that you need to follow in order to set up domain-specific signups. So when someone tries to sign up for your website and they're not from yourcompany.com, then they will um, essentially not be logged in and no user account will be created. So to get started, uh, you can see on the left-hand side that I have my files that are associated with my project. Um, the top one, uh, my project name is just called project, and my application that we're going to be working in is called Scanner, S-C-A-N-N-E-R. So um, first thing we're going to do is open up our settings file. Now if you're not using Play-Doh, this will probably be called just settings.py inside of your Django uh, setup. If you are using Play-Doh, then it creates a separate folder called settings where it puts base.py and local.py. Local inherits all of the settings from base, but then you can overwrite some additional settings that are specific to your website and your setup. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some uh, changes to the base.py file inside of your settings folder. So open that up, and you'll notice that if you're using Plato, there's already a section in here for browser ID. So browser ID, uh, here it says browser ID configuration. We're going to be adding two lines here. The first is browser ID underscore create user uh, underscore between create and user equals. And then what you're going to do is you're going to provide a function here that should be called when a new user is attempting to be created using browser ID. And the function that we're going to use is project dot your app name dot util dot create underscore user. And then we're going to add an additional variable here called accepted user domains, accepted underscore user underscore domains. And we're just going to create a blank array there. So you're going to do an open bracket, new line, and then a close bracket. So once you've done that, save that, and then move into your local.py settings file. And at the bottom of this file, we're going to add a number of domains and these are going to be specific to your website. So enter the variable accepted underscore user underscore domains equal and start a new bracket and close your bracket. And in between each one on a new line ending with a comma is going to be the domains from which you'd like to accept users. So in this case, I'm going to be accepting users to have an email address at mozilla.com or at mozilla.org. And that will restrict signups on this website to only users that have an account with those domain names. So now we need to do, um, we need to create our create user function. So in the base of your um, application inside of your project, you're going to create a file called util.py. And opening that up, we're going to enter some things in here. The first line, we're going to do some imports. We're going to import user from django.contrib.auth.models, import user and from django.com, import settings. And then from your project, import your application name. Uh, these two here, these two lines, uh, import login and import commonware, are just used for 
debug messages, so you don't necessarily need those. Uh, same thing with this line. Now we're going to create our create user function. And this uh, function is called create user, and it takes as a parameter the email address, which is essentially browser ID's username. So in this function, we're first going to split the username into just the email, into just the domain, I'm sorry. So we're going to do domain equals email dot r split, and then we're going to do that based on the at symbol and a maximum of one split, and we're going to use the second um, splitted item, split item. Split split. <laughs> um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through our settings dot accepted user domains, and we're going to compare the domain to those domains that we have entered as accepted user domains in our settings file. And then we're going to return, if it matches, we're going to return user.objects.createUser and then their email. And that's basically telling Django in browser ID that if a user matches one of our accepted domains, then create an account for them. If this, if this does not match, then it's not going to return anything and no user will be created. And when your page refreshes, you'll just be redirected back to the default page without being signed in. So let me give you a brief overview of how this looks. So here's a, an application that I'm working on called Scanner. And um, I'm going to go ahead and sign in here using my Mozilla email, which if you recall was one of the domains that we provided in accepted user domains. So when that happens, you can see that I'm logged in. Now I'm going to log out here and I'm going to try to log in using my Gmail account. So you can see that it's passed in, and now the page simply refreshes. I still have the sign-in dialog, and the user is not logged in. So that's everything that there is to um, restricting your website based on users' domain names. So this is great if you are trying to create a semi-private intranet for your um, organization, and you only want to allow users to have accepted domain names, that sort of thing. Um, what it's not going to work for is restricting users on other criteria. So um, if you want to use this method, then it's sort of an all or nothing. You can't accept some Gmail accounts and not others. However, you can use this function to split um, the email into the original part using a zero here, and you're going to receive the uh, username. So if you want to allow some Gmail accounts, then you could um, provide an exception in this method and you know, include your own functions, that sort of thing. But this is the base and this is the setup. Uh, if you have any questions about this, leave a, a comment and I will try to help you out with it. And thanks for watching.